Hey June News, here's one of those one in a hundred year floods we have every 10 years. This is the Paradise Dam on the Burnett River and it's in serious trouble. This dam is toast, it's cracked and it's falling to bits because somebody, we don't know who, somebody has pooched the formulation of the RCC com concrete that's in this and there's the clay is expanding and smashing the dam to bits amongst other problems. So we don't know who did this. This bloke was ultimately responsible in the day, although I doubt if he did the concrete formulations, but you know. It was I. <laughs> anyway, you and I are gonna be left holding the bill. So let's have a look at this. Let's find out what went wrong and they're going to build another dam. Let's hope it doesn't go wrong again, because, you know, we really need to know the truth. Answers. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe, and you know what I'm going to say? Let's, Let's rock. rock. I think it's time we blow this scene. Let's get everyone and the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Well, Joe Nerds, here we are flying in. We've just left Brisbane, heading up to a beautiful little town called Biggenden. Kudos to those who got the Cowboy Bebop reference at the beginning. Uh, here we are over the lovely, uh, just to the, the country to the west of Bundaberg, a very mineralised area. Here's the little town of Biggenden. Awesome place. If you're ever going through there, it's worth stopping and having a look. So talk to the guy in the news station. So tell him I said g'day. This is what we're talking about today, the Paradise Dam and Lake Paradise up behind it there. And uh, it's got some serious problems, as I think you've probably guessed from the intro. It's a beautiful piece of engineering, it really is. It's just a bit undercooked and uh, basically uh, it's, all, as uh, Mike Holmes would say, it's all coming down. So let's have a deeper look at what went wrong. Well, folks, the town of Paradise was in Cook County. Sir. Where's the office of the assessor of Cook County? Down the hall, turn right, take the elevator 1102. Thank you, sir. And I think the photograph you're about to see was taken from about here. Now this town wasn't around for long. It stretched for about a kilometer down the side of the Burnett River, as you see from the map and here in the photograph. 1889, it was gone 10 years later. The gold field ran out. This building in the middle at the back there, just keep an eye on that, we'll come back to that. But as you can see, this was the main street, Allen Street. Uh, it had a church, it had a school, it had a courthouse. Uh, it was a town. People lived there, people died there, people got married and got born there. But the gold ran out. Here's a map. I have no idea why this has been drawn all over, but this is the one from the archives. Uh, this map is uh, from um, the 19... Uh, 30s, and here's the town of Paradise actually drawn and marked on it, but it was gone by then. This one's from the 1950s, and this one is also, uh, you can see Paradise is marked there, but yeah, she's not really a town anymore. 1970s, uh, they acknowledge it, sort of, but there it is. Let's have a look at some aerial photography, and we'll put the map over it so you get an idea of where it is. This one's from uh, 1959, so she's well gone, but this is where the town used to be. This one is from uh, 1972. Again, that's where the town used to be. Not much there. This one's 1995. Awesome stuff. Do you get an idea the way it laid out? 
1996, obviously not much changed in a year, but uh, the maps were there. I thought we'd have a look at them, the aerial photography, I should say. This one's getting interesting, because this one's in 2001. This is when the dam was planned to be uh, get going. And of course, in 2005, the dam's finished. When they tell you the town's in the bottom of the dam, that's not completely true. Bits of it probably are. And when the dam's full like this, yes, bits of it certainly are, but it was mainly destroyed by the construction of the dam. Now, I'll just show you this. This was that house we looked at before. This was the courthouse. Now, this house went on. It got taken to Biggenden. It was used as the police station and the courthouse in Biggenden, and it's now the museum. So if you want to see a little bit of paradise, here it is in Biggenden, and you can go there and visit the museum anytime you want. Well, folks, why was all this here paradise? Well, this stuff, the yellow shiny stuff, of course. Two brothers, James and Thomas Allen, found this goldfield in 1889, and the town of Paradise grew up, and we've all seen that. But this reef gold, they would have found it in the creeks and rivers, followed it back to the reefs. But why was it here? Well, it's the geology, of course. Here's the dam, and I've put a 3D uh, hillshade map there. I'll just put the town over the top of briefly. I'm sure you've seen enough of that. But here's the geology. Now, the geology's interesting. Uh, first of all, the interesting bit is it's all volcanic. All of it, apart from the stuff in the river gravel. And look at the faults. This place is broken and torn to bits. Now, they're the faults they've mapped. There will be hundreds of more they haven't mapped. Needless to say, there's one going straight under the dam. Strangely enough, now, if you want to see evidence of that, this is the old dam before they lowered it. And uh, look at the straight line of the Burnett River. Rivers don't go in straight lines unless they're following a fault. These are the gold fields. You see all the little pock marks there, which are the workings. They're all in straight lines because they're following the reefs, the gold reefs. And I had to look back through the mining history. The M's with rings around them are actual mines. The others are just mining claims. And there will be dozens more that they just didn't bother. They just dug it out and racked off with it as usual. Uh, here we go. This is a geology relief, of course. So one more it promises the last time you'll see this. Uh, and of course, uh, there's something else in this area worth looking at. This is from 1905. This is the first concrete bridge built of its type in Australia, near Biggenden. Needless to say, that concrete's just fine. Now, if we're going to talk about unreinforced concrete spillways, we better start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. So the great-granddaddy of this Paradise Dam structure is right here in Brisbane. The oldest unreinforced concrete spillway in the world is here at the Gold Creek Reservoir. But don't take my word for it. Here's a friend of the channel and all-round good egg, John, from Gel Builder, to give you a bit of a look at it. Look at this reservoir here as well. I want to show you something that's actually quite fascinating. You'll notice this is stepped. It's about 1.5 meters each step. Now Gold Creek Reservoir has this. What the heck is that? What this is, it's a stepped spillway. My readings are that this was designed, I think, by a civil engineer. I think his name was John Henderson. I believe this was the very first of its kind in the world, a stepped spillway. So basically, when Gold Creek Reservoir, the dam here, gets too full, it comes up to capacity and it ends up going out over this spillway to Gold Creek. So this brings us to the Paradise Dam. Now, the Paradise Dam was commissioned by the Beattie government and it was designed and built between 2003 and 2005. It's a pretty quick construction. It's a gravity dam and it's mainly built from uh, Lean Mix Roller Compacted Concrete or RCC. Uh, the dam's constructed of many RCC layers and these are also called lifts. And the ones in the Paradise Dam are about 300 millimetres or the old, now a foot in the old money thick. And it's the largest RCC dam in Australia, or was, still is. Now, the principal rock used in the aggregate of the dam, and this is important for us, is actually the basalt that was 
quarried out of the channel in the river. And um, there was some, this is from uh, a formation called the Good Night Beds. There was some concerns raised by a guy from Wagner's. Now Wagner's were the ones doing the actual mixing on site. He was concerned about the reactivity of this material, as in, you know, basalt reacts in concrete and you get nasty reactions which can damage the thing and this has happened. They were also concerned about the suitability of the shear strength. As these lifts are put together, they have to lock together and there's problems with that and that is actually also a problem that's happening. One of the big problems was that the the a consortium of people including one of the senior consultants on the site messed with the formulation of the concrete but there was no peer review done of that new formulation they lowered the amount of concrete they leaned it up even more and uh it's just not working uh the secondary spillway was destroyed in the flood and you've seen some images that i'll show you some more and uh, after they've gone through and they've looked at everything and they've tried to fix it they've now decided the dam the concrete is compromised and uh, the dam's cracking it's leaking and it's got to go so they're going to build another one just downstream but no one is ultimately responsible i suppose premier pete is ultimately responsible you want to be the boss you wear the hat you got to take it but you didn't design the concrete and after all the inquiries nobody has been held accountable for this multi-billion dollar cock-up and it certainly is this is the biggest infrastructure stru failure in australia's history bar none so far well they keep an eye on that snowy mountain scheme so when this burnet river's in flood this is in 2013 it's open for business this dam is going to cop a hiding. This was all known before they designed it. This is before they lowered the spillway. This is the damage after that flood. It, the lower spillway is destroyed. It's been completely undercut. The rock's been compromised. It reminds me of the Orville Dam in the United States when the spillway failed. It ate half a mountainside out. Well, this was tearing the river apart. And they've had to fill it in with shitloads of concrete and reinforcing, which probably should have had to start with. But look at the undercut. This thing was going back under the dam wall. This was not too far away from actually catastrophic failure. It tore the reinforced concrete that was in the river. It tore the concrete away with rocks. And the damage to the... These are the lifts on the steps spillway. It's, it's just failing. And of course, because uh, it didn't have enough concrete in it. Now, they cut the spillway down under Anna to um, uh, try and alleviate the pressure. But look at the cracks in this thing. Uh, and of course, there's more floods. This is a less uh, severe flood after the spillway had been lowered. And uh, it's still damaging the dam. Now, I'm going to show you a video now of this dam wall. It's a beautiful lake there, uh, Lake Paradise. It's not particularly high here. But does anyone think that wall looks okay? It's cracked to hell. They've got tar all through it. There's still water leaking through it everywhere. Just look at those cracks. Replacing this dam is the right thing to do. That's for sure. So, folks, who done it? Was it Premier Pete? Was it him? Was it one of the Annas? Can't be sure. Apologise for these photos. I know they can be a little stressful. Could it be Campbell or Pete? So, who's going to fix it? Well, he didn't. Miles, he didn't get a chance. Chris Foley's having a go. He's given him the uh, permission to do it. So what are they going to fix it with? Well, this is not a small dam, but in the world, it's not a big dam. There are much bigger RCC dams in the world, but they're not built like this. This is third world stuff. Bad design. Poor design, not peer-reviewed. 
you know, some American PhD, and I'm not joking, says this is good, then it's good. No one questions it. Swelling, clay swelling, cement leaching, carbonization. You can't fix this. This is in Ethiopia. It's 270 meters high, RCC, working fine. I'll put a link to this uh, commission. It's heavy going, but there's all the names you want to know are in there. I'm not going to name the names because they're just going to sue me. So here we are. This is the proposal for the replacement. Mm, looks pretty good, actually. But then again, so the other one, when they drew a picture of it. I'm going to now play you the clip from some water. Now, you may smell something, but even so, let's watch it. Planning has begun for a new Paradise Dam wall on the Burnett River to ensure a safe and secure water supply for the Bundaberg region for future generations. This decision comes after serious new concerns were identified about the long-term viability of Paradise Dam, stemming from its original construction 18 years ago. Extensive testing has shown that Paradise Dam's concrete is losing strength over time. Both international and Australian experts have verified that these issues are unprecedented and unique to Paradise Dam. The risk of dam failure was reduced significantly by lowering Paradise Dam's wall between 2019 and 2021. However, no amount of improvement work will fix the existing dam. Sunwater will now progress a detailed business case for a new Paradise Dam wall immediately downstream of the existing structure. Design work on a new dam wall has already begun and relevant approvals, project costs and timeframes will be confirmed as part of this process. Sunwater has also appointed a major construction partner for the project. Due to its important role in supporting the region's economy, work will continue on a range of activities for the new dam wall. The good news is that these issues have been picked up now, rather than being revealed in the future, either during or following upgrade works to the existing structure. Further information about these issues and plans for the new dam wall can be found on Sunwater's website. Sunwater is committed to ongoing customer and community engagement and openly sharing information. Community safety and water security remain our top priorities, Well, folks, there you go. The good news is we found this out now, not later on when the dam failed catastrophically and killed half of the 60,000 people that lived downstream of it. Hmm, that's the good news. And uh, well, the not so good news is, hey, how about next time you put some dam cement in your concrete and peer review your designs? This American PhD holder, which if you read the report, you'll see his name. It's probably skulked off around the world somewhere now, earning a six-figure salary, and we're picking up the bill. Four and a half billion, with a B. Billion, there's only about six million people in Queensland. Do the maths. That is a absolute lot of money. It really is. And you know, we're talking about billions on the Olympics. Now we've got billions on these dams. I don't know where it's going to end. I really don't. Uh, how do we get this money? If only we had a resource that was in the ground that cost us nothing, really, and we could sell it overseas for shitloads of money. Hmm, not too sure. Ah, don't be silly. That'd never work. Hey, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And remember, geology rocks. Keep rocking. T-Rocks is out. in six miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. <laughs>